On Friday, there was a heated debate in the House of Commons about conversion therapy. Emotions ran high and few were more impassioned than the Conservative MP Alicia Kearns, who berated Alba MP Neil Hanvey for appealing on behalf of the LGB community. So here's how that exchange went. People in the LGB community are often referred to as bigots and transphobes and other slurs just because we have concerns about legislation such as this and we want to make sure that young LGB people are protected and trans people. Does she agree with me that that must apply, that rule must apply to all sides of any debate and not just one side that she favours? She's absolutely right, but there was one, one digit messaging from his LGB, LGBT. We do not divide the LGBT community in this place. You can say that you have concerns about what we're doing, but by removing the T, you are suggesting that transgender people do not exist. You are suggesting they are lesser than other LGB people. And I will not stand for that because it was trans people who stood with gay people at Stonewall. It was trans people who fought alongside for LGB rights. So when you say LGBT, you suggest when you remove the T, you suggest that they are lesser. Now, it's clear to me that Alicia Kearns is well-intentioned and sincere, and I mean no disrespect when I say that this is a subject about which she clearly knows very little. And that is dangerous, because if she gets her way on this issue, it will set back gay rights by decades. So let's address some of the key misconceptions. So firstly, Kearns claimed that Hanvey was suggesting that transgender people don't exist, and at no point did he make such a claim. Sexual orientation and the belief in gender identity are totally unrelated concepts. Kern seems to be suggesting that gay people have no right to campaign for their interests unless they simultaneously campaign for trans people. But why? Groups such as mermaids campaign solely for trans rights. Are they therefore homophobic? Perhaps Alicia Kearns would like to berate them in Parliament. I look forward to seeing that. Kearns went on to say that it was trans people who stood with the gays at Stonewall. Trans people fought together for LGB rights. Did they? I mean, there were some trans people involved in the struggle for gay rights, certainly, but not all that many. The activists who changed history for the better were predominantly lesbians and gay men. At the Stonewall Inn, it was mostly gay men with some lesbians and drag queens who were involved in the riots. And it was likely a lesbian, Stormy Delavery, who sparked the whole thing. After the police raided the bar, she was being forcibly arrested and is said to have shouted to the crowd, aren't you going to do something? Now, some trans activists have since attempted to rewrite history, claiming that a trans woman called Marsha P. Johnson threw the first brick at the Stonewall Inn. The trouble is, Marsha P. Johnson wasn't trans. He was a drag queen. And he wasn't even there when the rioting started. Now, if Alicia Kearns wants to know about the actual history of Stonewall, not the revisionist fabrications of activists, she could read Stonewall, the riots that sparked the gay revolution by David Carter. Or she could talk to someone who was actually there, such as the gay rights veteran Fred Sargent. Now, let's talk about the confusion that's at the heart of this parliamentary debate. What exactly is conversion therapy? A YouGov poll last year revealed that 65% of voters believe that gay conversion therapy ought to be banned, and 62% feel the same about trans conversion therapy. And this would suggest that most voters do not recognise the difference between the two, and nor do many politicians. Now, this photograph was taken in Westminster Hall, a cross-party collective of dozens of MPs with a placard that reads, I support a trans-inclusive ban. And the image was posted on Twitter by Labour MP from Nottingham East, Nadia Whittam. In truth, and without realising it, these politicians are supporting a new form of gay conversion therapy, something that most of us thought would be consigned to the history books by this point. When we hear that phrase, conversion therapy, most of our minds leap to a variety of horrific practices. So in America, Christian fundamentalists have established programs to address the problem of homosexuality. There are camps where young people can pray the gay away, which I suppose is at least a step forward from brain surgery, castration, and the kind of electric shock treatment favoured by scientific practitioners in the 20th century, or the corrective rape of lesbians to cure them of homosexual tendencies that still goes on in some countries. Such practices are, of course, already illegal in the UK. So why the need for a conversion therapy ban? Well, what's happening is there is a conflation of sexual orientation 
and gender identity, and this is why so many are confused. In her book, Time to Think, Hannah Barnes revealed that between 80 to 90 percent of adolescents who were referred to the Tavistock Pediatric Gender Clinic were same-sex attracted. We've known for a long time there's a strong correlation between gender nonconformity in youth and being gay in adult life. Members at the Tavistock itself joked that soon there would be no gay people left. Whistleblowers revealed that homophobia was endemic. In other words, children who are likely to grow up gay are being fixed by medical practitioners to better conform with stereotypical heterosexual paradigms. Barnes's research shows that the Tavistock Clinic, and this is a quote, ignored evidence that 97.5% of children seeking sex changes had autism, depression, or other problems that might have explained their unhappiness. There are only 2% of the country's children that suffer from an autistic spectrum disorder. So why is it that 35% of referrals to the Tavistock fit into that category? In almost all instances, children who are prescribed puberty blockers go on to cross-sex hormones, which in some cases leads to irreversible surgery. We're dealing here overwhelmingly with gay and autistic children fast-tracked onto a pathway to sterilization. This is what MPs such as Lloyd Russell Moyle and Alicia Kearns and Keir Starmer are supporting, whether they realize it or not. Now, thankfully, more and more people are waking up to the scale of this problem. So recently, the Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch, wrote to the Commons Women and Equality Select Committee about her discussions with former clinicians at the Tavistock. And the conclusion, so-called gender affirmative care amounts to what she described as conversion therapy for gay kids. And crucially, she cited a survey of detransitioners. These are people who have been pressurized into transitioning and they later regret it in which 23% of respondents put their determination to transition down to experiences of homophobia. Badenoch quoted a gender clinic in Germany. They said it must be understood that early hormone therapy may interfere with the patient's development as a homosexual. This may not be in the interests of patients who, as a result of hormone therapy, can no longer have the de decisive experiences that enable them to establish a homosexual identity. It is profoundly disturbing that Starmer's Labour Party is now officially supporting gay conversion therapy in the form of a ban on trans-inclusive conversion therapy and that he is gaining cross-party support. Now, a charitable interpretation is that Starmer, Keynes, Russell Moyle, Whittam, all the other MPs who are supporting this simply do not understand that they are advancing dangerously anti-gay proposals. They are supporting the new Section 28. And all the while, they think they're doing the precise opposite. Now, if any of these politicians would like to come onto this show and discuss these issues, I would be delighted to have them. Consider it an open invitation. In the meantime, I'd like to remind Parliament that homosexuality was removed from the World Health Organization's list of psychiatric disorders back in 1993. Being gay is not a medical condition that requires treatment. Unfortunately, activists have been remarkably successful in confusing the issues through semantic ambiguities and the redefinition of terms. And so though it's although, although it sounds desperately counterintuitive, the truth is that in order to oppose gay conversion therapy, one must be opposed to a ban on trans conversion therapy.